All right, so we've been talking a lot about theoretically. I've mentioned some settings in here that are valuable. All of these other screens are sort of self-explanatory. You go over to analytics once you've got videos you've uploaded to see the data, to see minute-by-minute minute breakdown, second-by-second second breakdown of people's attention. We don't have anything to look at in analytics. We haven't uploaded anything. Quick look at Create. I think this is one of the best screens about YouTube. This is the whole audio library. This is where you can get thousands of free songs in a variety of instruments and genres and moods and all of that. So for example, you've got, what's the name of the track? You can add it to your favorite to come back to it. Look at various genres, moods, instruments, duration, attribution, and search. Let's say I'm about to create a video and Maybe I want to start off with, well, uh, a mood. I want this to be a, a bright mood. So then this will show you, okay, you've got all of these ones. Staunch and true, a cold cloud, and then you can actually play to hear it. And then if you like it, you can click the download button on the right side. Download it, open it up in your Windows Movie Maker, in your iMovie, and add it to your video for free. If you click the little star, then you're building a collection of favorites, and then all your favorites, you can get back to it. Now, what I would say about this is uh, I use this all the time, even for paying clients and such, because I do not recommend for you to go to your iTunes library, get your favorite song, and put it in your video. Technically, you're on your way to copyright violation. Uh, best case scenario, YouTube mutes your video. It just removes all the sound, even your own voice, because YouTube says, you did not pay for that song. Yes, I did. I paid iTunes. Yes, you paid iTunes to listen to the music, but you didn't pay for the rights to use it in a video. That's thousands of dollars, not 99 cents. So don't use any song that you have on your live, in your music library and such. Use the iTunes, uh, use the, the YouTube audio library. All of these are totally free for you to use, and there's thousands of songs here. What I would say about this screen, it may or may not matter to you, but what this bar here is showing is the popularity. Well, if you're using Club Diver, a lot of other people are also using it, and it doesn't tell you the number of other people, but other people are also using that song. You may not care. You like the song, you use it. As you perhaps drill down, like I want the mood of calm, and I also want a genre of uh, ambient. Notice it's narrowing it down further. And then from here you're seeing, okay, event, event departure, relatively less popular than the other ones. Do I like it? Let me hear. That may be, that may be fine for my particular video. So I can download it, and it shows that less people have used it, so um, it's not going to be like everyone else's. Ticker seems to be very popular. Based on these results, it's got the, one of the highest popularities. It doesn't, it doesn't mean a million people have used it. It could be simply 70 people have used it, and two have used this one. There's no number that it tells you. And as I said, these, these tracks are perfectly fine for you to use on any of your videos if your video is out there for free or if you're trying to monetize it. Perfectly fine. What I would do, however, is notice some of these have a little person. It looks like a little bathroom symbol, men's room over here. But what this is is attribution. What this is saying, basically, is that any of these that have the little person say, you're free to use this song but you must include the following in your video description. So I have to copy and paste this and put it in my video description, and then it's perfectly fine for me to use it. That might be a small price to pay for that amazing song. I personally don't want to do that because I've got other things to do to make the video, to upload it, and all of that. I'm going to forget to give that credit. I personally go to the column of attribution and say, only show me tracks where attribution is not required. So I don't even have to bother with that. These need no credit. These need no shout out to the original person. These need nothing that explains that it's not my original song. That's what I personally do because I've got a limited amount of time in the day 
And yes, the, it's just one second to copy and paste, but for me, it's too, too many seconds. Yes? What if I've only got a video that, that is, has, I'm sure, copyrighted songs, because it's much, I was just doing it for personal. Mm -hmm. If I put it on YouTube for private, can I do that? Um, for private, I'm not exactly sure. I would air. I would go toward the route of saying you, probably not. YouTube, even if you've got it private, YouTube still scanned your video and still found the song. I don't exactly know what would happen. Definitely, if it's public or unlisted, it won't like it. If it's private, I'm not exactly sure. But the reason it's being private is really only you will see it. And if you give people the uh, the chance to view it individually, I, I think YouTube wouldn't like it either. Okay. So you might want to then look at here and see if you've got music instead that you can use rather than that other music. Here's all of these results. And you can even go in duration. I've got a four minute long video and here it's showing me, in this case no matches, but I have to maybe decrease my, my search. So if I need a four minute long video that is calm, I mean, a four minute long song that is calm, actually, you're not required to have these two options. And of the two, that's the most popular. Don't look. Yes? If, if you have a six minute video um, and you found three minute music, can you download it twice, one right after the other? Or? Well, you download it one time from YouTube, and then in your software, like iMovie or Movie Maker, then you copy it twice and have it play uh, twice okay. in your software. What's that? I was going to say you can fade it in at the beginning, and you can fade it out at the end of your video type of thing. Yeah, that would be in, in the software, and uh, instead of it suddenly playing, you could fade in or out in the software. Yeah. YouTube has a built-in video editor right there. So instead of getting iMovie, or instead of getting Movie Maker, right there under Create you have Video Editor. I don't recommend to use that one because you first have to upload your video to it before you can edit it. So most times videos are going to be dozens, if not hundreds of megabytes large, and when you try to upload it, it's going to take several minutes simply to upload simply for it to be available for you to edit. And if I've got like a 10 minute long video, it might take half an hour simply to upload it to the editor. Whereas it's already ready on my computer to edit. This is fine for quick edits, and you need Google Chrome to use it anyway, so if I use Firefox all the time, it may not really work. So. It's something here that you could possibly use. I personally don't use it much. I personally use, have used Windows Movie Maker for a long time. Very recently I bought Adobe Premiere Elements. It was on sale at Fry's for $70, normally $90, and I've really enjoyed it. It's more powerful than Movie Maker, but all of the examples that I showed for previous clients, that was either in iMovie or Movie Maker. Um, that's the create section, analytics, channel settings, community. Under community is where you would be seeing people's comments held for review and published. So if you activated the feature, don't let any comment appear until I allow it, they will show up here. You can see who your subscribers are, send them messages, look at your captions, all of that. So pretty self-explanatory under community. Live streaming, this is much more than we can really talk about, but here's where you would set up to do a live video broadcast. Video manager, all, where all your videos exist. We have no videos, so let's upload a video. Any questions before we, we do that on any of these? Can we save them? Can we save the Yes, that's the cool part about it. You create a live stream. If someone didn't catch it at that moment, they can come back to your channel and view it later. Okay, so, so, yes. If you do a live stream, and let's say for argument's sake you don't want it, you can decide whether it goes up or not. It goes up or um, if it's live, it's live. Yeah. So if you set it to be live, anyone could, could come across it and, and watch it. Yeah, what was going on? 
while it's yes. going on. But and that's then, fine, but that's, that, as far as the saving it, that you can change that yes you can delete it after the fact or you can set it not to auto save um, so that it was only one time live thing and it's gone you can set it back to private instead of deleting it you can set it back to private no one can see it but the footage is still saved because if you delete it it's gone yes does anybody know what live streaming is happening do they have a separate thing that says all this stuff is live streaming right this minute yes youtube there is a there is a view up on youtube where people can go specifically to the live stuff somewhere over here one of these screens somewhere so there is a live part and also you want to take into account we've talked about facebook and twitter and such if i've got a few followers on facebook and i have zero on youtube I could tell my people on Facebook, hey, we're live, and they can come over to face to YouTube to watch. So I should take advantage of my other social networks to bring in more people to my live events. And if people subscribe to your channel, they will get a notification also when you go live. On the top right corner, let's click the Upload button. It's always there. Upload. Click Upload. From upload, if I've got my main Gmail account with all my photos being backed up, I can make slideshows out of those photos. So I can import some photos from Google Photos. I, it still says you can do live streaming. I can uh, create a slideshow, use the editor. We're going to focus on this one here, where I can select public, unlisted, or private. For the purposes of the class, maybe just to learn this, we can set it to private and uh, click the big arrow right there. That'll open the box to select the video. So if you copy that video, you can select it and open it. And depending on your internet connection, we have a very good internet connection. It's going up really fast. Most of us at home don't have the speeds that we have here. So this particular video that I've given you is only 43 megabytes. It's not that big, but on most people's home connections, it will probably take 3 to 10 times more time than I just showed right here. Our college has a very fast internet connection. It uploaded really fast. At your own home, you may be disappointed how slow your upload is. Because these companies, AT&T, Cox Cable, Time Warner, they're always telling us how fast their internet is. They're really saying how fast the download speeds are. They never say how fast the upload speeds are. So on my particular plan, I kind of cheaped out, but I have a plan that's 12 megabyte download. I'm perfectly happy with it. Uploads is two megabyte uploads. Uh, my friend, she has a 50 megabyte download. Much faster downloads than me. But her upload is still barely five megabytes upload speed. So I don't care how fast it's downloading. I'm not stealing videos and such. I care about uploading video, and my connection is very slow. Uh, and you'll probably see on your own. They're, they sold you on fast speeds fast download speeds. And this minute-long video, in our case, in this lab, took almost not, no time to upload. Uh, when you do this on your own, you may be surprised. It's this 20 more minutes waiting time. Mine is uploaded, then it processes it because it's going to scan it. Is there any copyrighted music in this? And then we've got all of these little screens to fill out, which are reminiscent, which are familiar about that other screen. Title. I didn't specify a title in the defaults, but it filled something in for me based on the file name of the, of the file. So if my file was called mymovie.mp4 or mymovie.mov or whatever, then it would be suggesting this is going to be called mymovie. So I forgot to mention it, but if you change the name of your file name to something meaningful, it will automatically put, put that name here. And if it doesn't, doesn't matter, you can easily change it. In my case, a title is appearing based on what the file name was, which is Victor Campos Tech Review 
Tuesday Moto E. On the subject of, of, of YouTube title videos, this relates, if you took the SEO class, to think in terms of keywords that people are searching for. So we'll say, title your videos. accurately, succinctly, with keywords. Accurately, accurately then, is that, that of course your title is about what your video is. There's so many people out there <laughs> that title their video just because it's a hot trend to, to get views and to trick people to watch their video, but then that results in a lot of thumbs down. You tricked me into that video, I'm going to dislike it. So be accurate and honest about what your video is. Succinctly, you have space to write a lot here, but don't use the title to write a whole soliloquy. That's what the description is for. So I would say, if the title of what your video is fits within this box, that's good. Once you start getting too far over there, even YouTube itself will tell you, uh, that's possibly a too long of a name. It'll let you do it, but it's going to tell you it's going to be too big. That title's going to get cut off. So stay within the confines of that box. And keywords. So I've given you a video where I review the Moto E. You want to put the most important parts of, the, of what the video is in the title first. Here I'm promoting myself. I want myself, when people search my name, perhaps to find me. But really, if anyone knows me, they can find me easily. They don't really care to find me, they care to find a review on this product. So really, the review part of the keywords is what's most important in this title. So lead with what your video really is about. I'm going to say Motorola. Moto E review. And then maybe I can say my name. Don't worry too much actually about putting your name, your company name, your branding in the title of your video. You're just taking up space. This is better space for you to further refine this title as I'm about to show you. So here in the notes, don't worry about your branding your name in the title. It will be attached automatically to the channel. It will be visible other ways. You're wasting your space here to write a good title. Focus on keywords and search terms. Motorola Moto E Review. I thought of that and so did 100 other people. Um, so I could say Motorola Moto E Review, an affordable choice. I'm adding more of these keywords in complete sentences about what people could be searching for. An affordable cell phone, an affordable smartphone choice. Someone could search for that. Affordable smartphone. You could go to YouTube and search affordable smartphone. You could go to Google, search affordable smartphone review. I've got the keyword review, affordable smartphone. I've got the name of the product people would be searching for. Is the Moto E affordable? I've got the keyword affordable. And yes, I could go on and on and on and add more ideas here, but we're going to keep it within the confines of the box too long of a title and it could be seen as spammy and it could be marked as spam by YouTube. You're trying to game the system. One way to figure out what to write here is, if I open up another YouTube window, I could go see what are other people writing about based on that product. I'm going to do Moto E. It's giving me suggestions. Moto E second generation, third generation, review, Unboxing, Boost Mobile 2015, Moto E Pokemon Go. It's already giving me suggestions simply by searching. Do any of these hot searches apply to mine? My particular one is the Moto E second generation, I think. 
Um, so I might think about putting that in the title or in the description. Yes? I'm curious, why, why do people put up videos when there's already videos about a certain thing? I mean, because I've seen multiple and they, they look different, but still. Well, that's the thing. They look different. It's a different opinion. It's like a second opinion, like getting a second doctor's opinion. Maybe someone um, has a bias, not that the, bi the word bias needs to be a negative connotation, even though it often has, but people have a bias that I'm going to review this phone through the lens of a, a video game player. I'm going to review this phone in the, in the lens of a parent. So people could be having their spin on it. Okay, just curious. I, I'm going amazed that you pull up a subject and you get 10 videos. Everyone probably has their own take on it. Uh, Moto E for kids. And then so I suppose some of these show up related to that. So it's everyone's it, it's their own it's their own take on it. Within the description here, then I have no limit to what I can write here, and I'll show you some good tricks or some good tips right here. Um, I had put in the uh, automatically populate my web address here so I could uh, I could leave it as is I could write something more you can say uh, read our blog and then have a link short sure. uh, when you when when someone does a search things appear like the title and there's that description and at a certain point it gets cut off you will have a limit to what is automatically displayed here. Even though you can write as much as you want here, it'll get cut off at a certain point. So you want to put the most important text first. Here it's showing gameplay on the Motorola E. Or any result. At a certain point it gets cut off. Put in your most important text first for keywords. And if a person hey guys, to, Mikey or the and if a person were to watch your video, they would see it something like this, that the description that they wrote will be visible here. The name of your channel will be visible there. There'll be a subscribe button so people can subscribe right away. If you put a logo, it will be there. Your views will be visible there. Likes, dislikes. And then your description. It'll automatically say when you uploaded it, when you published it. So it'll show up first, and then it'll show what text you started to write. Show more. You can write as much as you want, but most of it will be hidden like that. A lot of people don't know that there's more, so they will just look at that and think that's it. So of course then, your first three sentences, your first three lines that you're writing here then, are the ones that are going to be visible. Basically these top three lines right here are the ones that are going to be most visible to people. I don't know the stats, I don't know how many people never click that read more as opposed to those that do click read more. So assume at worst people are not going to click read more. So put your most important thing on the first three lines. Or description. Add your most important text in the first three lines. If a person chooses to read more, they can read more. And notice you can have active links in this part here. This is saying pricing and availability with a with a link there most likely that's an affiliate link that's another way to make money off of YouTube internally to YouTube we have all of these ways here monetization paid content fan funding outside of YouTube you have affiliate links so let's get Amazon links, get uh, Google Store links, you know, some other off-site system. You have to have some sort of deal, contract, whatever system that if you are given an affiliate link, 
you add it to your description, someone clicks on it, you profit from that. Affiliate links. That's probably what's going on here. Someone sees that phone, they see it's got all this good stuff, they want to buy it, well, they follow that link, they profit it from that link. When you sign on as Yes and no, and with an emphasis on no. You can do it, technically, but technically when we click that button to agree to create our channel, it said do not do that. And it can keep track of it if it's seen, why are all of these artificial clicks happening to this item here? They can shut down your channel. Um, that's not to say you can't have your friends and family do it, but on your own particular videos, if they find out, it's very bad and they could shut the whole channel down. What if um, the same person Watching your video, clicks it on different occasions throughout the year. You get paid from Yes, yes. Um, that is much more of a uh, truthful or realistic result rather than one person clicking multiple times. If they do click on it on different days and times and, and so forth, that is more truthful, so that should not be a problem. So here. Uh, for description, add your most important stuff, if appropriate, add links in your description. They'll become active, they'll become clickable. Have you ever seen a video where uh, this one, for example, it's 23 minutes long, and you have this chapters. You have the ability to jump to different portions of the video. It's 22, 23 minutes long, but I want to jump directly to item number one. It's over at 15 minutes. 40 seconds. These are uh, basically chapter stops. So uh, I've got limited time. I can't watch all 23 minutes. I want to jump down to the recap. I can click and it'll jump me directly down to 20 minutes, 21 seconds. We can do that very easily here in the description. All you need to do is write a time code. Um, this video that we uploaded is 1 minute 30 seconds long. So if I write 0 colon 25, that means jump me to 25 seconds. If I write 1 colon 02, it's going to jump me to 1 minute 2 seconds. So you need to know at what times throughout your video to set these up. There's nothing special about writing any code or anything else. You just write a time code. So the way you could do this is, you're writing your description, you know, read our blog, we take a look at the latest and greatest, and then here I write something like chapters, and then I start writing here, 25 seconds, intro, one minute over here, specs, and then over here at 1 minute 22 seconds, price, I'm writing whatever I want to explain people. If you click here, this is what you're going to see. After I publish it, when we get to publish, when we're done with the video, these will become active links inside of your video. That's what I'm showing here. I want to jump to specific portions of the video. Well, this has got the time in seconds. There it is, jump to step 4. Uh, you just uh, put it in minutes and seconds. The, the colon divider there is minutes, seconds. So this is a way to have people enticed to watch your whole video. Let's say I'm doing five minutes long, ten minutes long. 
that's not in the grand scheme of things that long. But think about yourself. When was the last time you watched a 10 minute video on YouTube straight? Probably you jumped around a little bit. Maybe you only watched a little bit of it and did something else. But if in your description here you're, you, you make it easy for people to consume it how they want, and notice I wrote that chapters within the first three, this is one video that, that we did for a client, I, I wrote here, uh, within the first three lines, oh, there's more. And then, oh, show more. So hopefully they'll click. What we wrote here on the very beginning, something to catch your attention. There's something coming out more. Chapters, show more. And then they see the rest. And then special offer, affiliate link. Send us an email, affiliate link, etc. So you're not limited to just text on these descriptions. You can put active links. You can put a time code. Simply adding a time will jump you to different ports, portions of the video. And in this case, it's almost up to 2,000 views, 25 likes. If you try to put in a time that doesn't exist, you know, this video is not five minutes long. Uh, I forget what happens, but I think it just jumps you to the very end of the video. If, if appropriate, appropriate, if appropriate, um, add a time code. Add time codes. It's in the format minutes and seconds. And chapter is another word for time code? No, chapters is like here's a different uh, chapter in the video. Here's a different section in the video. This could be called sections. Ah, uh, okay, so they can be chapters, sections, or time, time codes. Okay. No, the time code is the time code. The time code is writing where within your video does this happen. And I'm just showing here in this description, these are the different chapters or sections of the video. But you do have to write a time code for this to work. And then tags here, separated by commas, keywords that help you get found. So we could do review, comma, Motorola, comma, Moto E, comma, um, budget, smartphone, comma. All of these are key, one keyword even with spaces. So it doesn't hurt you to fill this up here. I wouldn't put like 30 keywords, but I would put, like I've said, for hashtags. Um, for hashtags, we said one to three hashtags. Um, I, you can be a little bit mo more liberal here. You can go, you know, three to seven tags here. When you're getting up to the higher ones of 7 and 10 keywords, that's starting to get perhaps a little spammy. Because based on what you wrote over here, these are keywords as well in the description and in the title. So tags, you shouldn't go overboard with that. You probably wrote these keywords anyway in the description or title. Once you go through the verification process, you can, you can upload a unique thumbnail because at the moment it's it's having me choose one random thumbnail from somewhere in the beginning of my video, somewhere at the end of my video, and somewhere in the middle of the video. And none of these look very flat. <laughs> so I may want to upload a custom video. I don't have the button to upload a custom video because I didn't I didn't activate that under the settings. But notice examples of other people's videos. This one's been designed in Photoshop. They took the picture, they added text, they uploaded it customized. Same thing here. This one doesn't look like it because I cannot read any of this. It seems to be a screenshot from the video and it's not readable. Not a good screenshot. This one's coming from the video itself, probably. It's okay. I can't quite read his text, white text on his white shirt. This one, pretty bad. It's just coming directly from the video. It's kind of dark, can't really see it. Another bad one, another bad one. So the ones that are going to stand out are the ones that you're, are going to be crafted. Look at this one, how to invest your money. That one stood out uh, because it was designed. Look at this one, Buffett's investment advice. 
black text, the white text, and black background, the perfect contrast picture, this one was designed. That one was probably designed. Yes? So are, I'm sorry, I didn't follow this part. Are you saying that you need to, what do you need to do to set up ahead of time so that you can pick your thumbnail? You need to have the idea of what your video is. You need to have some software like Photoshop to create the, the picture. And then when you're at this point, you'll have a button that says upload a thumbnail. Oh, you prepare the thumbnail in advance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I seem to recall years ago, you used to be able to browse your video and choose a thumbnail. They took that out. So no matter, because I'm, I'm telling you, you want to craft your own thumbnail. Right here where I searched Top Investing Tips 2016. Look at these that appear. This is the one that we did for the client. This is just a screenshot right out of the, the video. It's not that good. This one is crafted. This one is crafted, although it's hard to read here. So when you deal with thumbnails, you want to think about, you've got a really small space. So big words to catch your attention. With a custom thumbnail, so I'm going to say favor a custom thumbnail. Don't go for one of those pre-generated ones. Favor a custom thumbnail. Create it in software like Photoshop. Add uh, big word, big text, big font. Keep it simple. Yes, let, let me tell you right here actually. Uh, thumbnail size go for 1920 by 1080 pixels. Basically, an HD sized picture. It's pretty big, but it's notice it's showing that big size, small, and in different dimensions everywhere. So that's why we still want a big font, keep it simple. Those are your dimensions to work with. And I was going to say here avoid important stuff in the bottom right corner. Let me show you the example. You're looking at these videos here. seem to be okay. Maybe this one. Avoid content in the bottom right corner because your time, the length of your video is there and stuff to get cut off. So if any of this text were important for you to read, the time code is going to be in the corner that cuts it off. So if I'm in this view over here, how to trade penny stocks from, from what? I can't, I can't tell because the time code is in the corner. So avoid important in the corner. Now this one here, how to invest your money to the mountain? I can't tell what it is. Depending on what uh, you've written there and, and, and those sorts of things, the time code is going to be in the corner of every video. So try to avoid right there. I can't see the website. But it's books something. Yes, I can tell what it is, but try to avoid adding important content on the bottom right corner of your thumbnail. If you have a watermark put on there, is it automatically going to go in that bottom right corner? The or thumbnail, uh, the watermark will appear when the video plays. Okay, so not the time, not the thumbnail itself. Exactly. Uh, let me play this video. So after at a certain amount, see there it is right there. There's the thumbnail on the bottom right corner. It, ap it appears when the video is playing in the bottom right corner. So there is something to be said also, depending on your thumbnail, that's why they want the transparent. When you've got your video, think about that's going to be covering it. If someone creates the slide, you could actually just put your logo in one of the other corners on your slide or whatever too, right? Yes, but the reason you want the thumbnail is because this is an active link. If you want this watermark, I mean, it will automatically pop up here with subscribe. And if this video gets embedded on someone else's site, your logo in your slideshow is not an active link. This is an active link to take people back to your channel. So what is 
such term? Is it like follow? Exactly. It's YouTube's terminology for a follow. So you want followers, you want subscribers to your channel on YouTube like you want followers on every other network. We can't see it here. Uh, it's on a separate screen. Uh, but there will be a new tab called Annotations. So after I upload this video, I can then go back to edit the video and there will be a new tab called Annotations. And that's how I can add boxes upon my video to make active links to do other things. Yes. So choose a good thumbnail at some point. Here's where you can set it to private or public or unlisted. If you do set it to public, you can also send this off to your Google Plus to tell your followers there about your video. And you, if you'd like to connect it to Twitter, this will automatically get sent to Twitter when you publish it so that your fans on Twitter know about it. There used to be a button here also for Facebook, but Google and Facebook are not friends anymore, so it's not here. On the next screen, you will be able to send it to Facebook, but it's one extra step. Whereas here, I just turn it on and it will automatically go to Twitter or Google+. And here's where you set playlists. These are like folders to organize your, your videos. I don't have any playlists, but I can create one here. So maybe I'm creating a playlist full of tech create new Tech Review Tuesday. So every time I upload my Tech Review Tuesday series of vlogs, of video picture, of video blogs, uh, it will be put into this playlist, this folder, and then a person could click to play that playlist and it'll play all of them in sequence. And I can put an item into more than one playlist. Um, mobile phones. So this particular video will be in two playlists. Can put as many as I want. Here, uh, here it doesn't. Well, let me confirm. I'm going to create one more video called "All About Stuff." It's putting it alphabetically. So you could do one, two, three. Yes, but I would use meaningful names here because, again, people are going to search for things. I could call this playlist Mobile Phone Reviews. People will search for that. They're not going to search for one or two or three. So always thinking in terms of keywords. I'll say highly consider using playlists. Organize your videos into groups, right? Into 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 organizational units. Put them into playlists. Name playlists with uh, keywords. All of that is under the basic screen. If you have activated monetization, if you verified the account and activated monetization, you will have a new tab here called monetization. And you turn that on and from there, which I can't show you, but once you turn on monetization, you'll be able to say show ads at the beginning of my video, show ads at the end of my video, show ads in the middle. If you turn all of them on, you could possibly get more revenue. If you turn them all on, it could be annoying for people because you're going to see ads, ads, ads all over your video. So if you choose only at the beginning or only at the end, it's a little nicer for people. You'll get less revenue. It's up to you to decide. I haven't had much of a problem by turning them all on. Uh, more ads will show, but if it's good content, people will probably uh, not worry about it. And if it's a good ad that people click on, that's better for me because then I profit from it. So I can't show you how monetization looks exactly, but it's pretty straightforward. You just turn it on and set how you want it. Translations 
if you <coughs> choose to have your description in another language, you can do this, but this is not automatic or free. If I select that I also want my description to be in Spanish, I would say, okay, Spanish description, and I would have to provide that description in another language. It does not translate it for me. But guess what? You t uh, Google can sell you professional translation. This is to help you get found with more languages. And an advanced setting. All of these defaults are fine if you set your defaults over on that other screen we looked at. I had set it to allow comments until they're approved. I had set it to view the ratings and the license and all of that. So these defaults are fine. Video location, language, reporting date. These defaults are fine. There's no way to back date a video, this recording date, even though if I set it to be uh, last Monday, it will not say here, it will not say here published August 1st. No. Whatever the time it is published, it is set. That cannot be changed. Uh, I don't see too much of a purpose. I have not seen too much of a purpose of putting a recording date on a previous day. Uh, perhaps if people search a specific day, they may find your video, but I don't think that's too common. Um, so, obviously there's a lot of little settings, not completely confusing, but hopefully they make sense. And in, in any of these, you also have the Help Center uh, the big idea to talk about here is about how will you get people to find your video, and then this is, uh, this is here. Good description, good, good title, good description, keywords, good thumbnail, organization. That's a way to help you get found. Also take, uh, take advantage of your other social media. Promote this video on your Twitter. Promote this video on your, on your Facebook. Promote it on your other networks where you might have some activity to bring more activity here. Is obviously a bigger type, uh, bigger subject than uh, than you might think. We're already out of time, um, so I'm gonna click done. And now my video. If we go back to my Creator Studio, now I've got a video there. Based on every other tactic that we've talked about about getting followers and views on every other network, that applies here too. Um, so as we wrap up, any uh, final questions? We didn't get a chance to do a couple of things here and there, but final questions? Yes? Okay, on that bad settings, I see this thing where it says syndication. It says mm -hmm. everywhere, and I'm not tax plan for the little things. Okay, this is uh, people will be able to watch your video everywhere, on YouTube, uh, on the YouTube app, on a TV, everywhere. But if you set it to only platforms that I can make money off of, then it, your video might not be visible everywhere. If you can't make money off of your video on a TV view, then it will not be visible on a TV if people want to watch it there. Uh, so I would uh, decide for yourself. If you, if you only put monetized, not everyone will see it, but you'll make money. If you put everywhere, everyone will be able to see it, but you won't make money off of every view, and that might not be so bad. That could help you get viral, but if someone sees it on a tablet and then shares it on Facebook, you could have more people see it. One final thing here. If I go back to my video manager and I go back to, uh, I see my video that I uploaded. If I go to this edit after I've uploaded it, notice I have many more options, such as enhancements, audio, annotations, cards, and subtitles. We don't have time to really go into detail, but an, an enhancements let you fix some of the colors and the shakiness and all of that that I mentioned. Audio lets you add music after you've uploaded the video, although the problem with that is then the new music could take over the old Hello everyone, this is Victor audio. Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. Annotations let you make these little boxes appear on your video so that people can click to go to a website and such. So I 
here I can add a speech bubble and I'll make a little text here and I'll say bye now and then add a link. So that will appear in the middle of the video for people to, to click on. I think people are getting numb to annotations. I think people think these are pretty annoying because these are so easily abused. So the new generation is cards. These are related to annotations except that they play on certain times of, of the video. You add a card, uh, an unobtrusive little bit of graphic appears in the corner. Only you cannot place it all over your video, but a card will appear in the corner and I'll let people view another video, subscribe to you, follow a link, etc. That's newer. And then subtitles. If you go to subtitles, set your language on this, and then what it'll do is um, you can go in there and, and have it uh, do subtitles. The, the purpose of subtitles is that not everyone can watch a video and hear the video. They might be at work and they still want to watch your how-to video. Well, if you go through the trouble of setting up annotations or, I mean, subtitles, then below it at the bottom it'll have the text of what you're saying. The auto subtitles here are okay, but they often make mistakes, so you're able to activate auto sync and then download the file and then edit the file and re-upload it and then the words will be correct. That's much more than we have time for. So um, at this point we need to wrap up and uh, we're kind of out of time so Hopefully you keep exploring YouTube and uh, seeing what it's useful, why it's useful for you. Hopefully I see you in a future class, and uh, thank you for coming.